Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to talk about CE or UK CA testing. Now you'll see if you follow me on TikTok and Instagram and on here that I've been doing um, a few shorts on my own UK CA testing journey. So I'm just going to run you through what I found out, um, if there's any sort of pointers that I can give you in a really quick video and then if you join me back um, week by week I'll go through the tests in a little bit more detail um, and explain everything that I found out that you might need to know or that you can take some tips from. So let's go. So first things first, um, you want to download your pack you want to buy your kit so you need to buy a kit from um, the website which I will link in the description now you're not going to send your toys off to a lab unless you really want to but there's a really high cost involved in that you're going to self-test them at home now this is absolutely fine for the handmade seller if you go to the website that's in the description you will see that um, a lot of handmade sellers do this when they first get going. It's only when you become sort of a really big company that you'll need to send off your designs to have them properly tested. So let's go and have a look at the website where you can get your self-certified kit from. So this is the website that I used to get my kit from. So if you click onto the link in the description below, you'll see this website and it's got everything on it that you need to know. You can purchase your UK CA and CE marking guides in here. It tells you exactly what guide is for where you want to distribute and sell your toys. One is for the UK only and one is for Northern Ireland and um, the EU. There's loads of things in there. You can buy technical files only. You can buy the full kits in there. And there's a lot of info to help. So you've headed over there, you've got your kit. I would recommend printing it off. Now I've printed mine off. It's all in this nice handy file here. I've also got a file. I like to be really organized, that's the thing. But I think it also helps as you're going through. You've got a paper copy to hand when you're doing the test. If you want to film or photograph them, um, that you can just refer to as you're doing it. So that's really, really useful, I think. Another thing that I'd recommend is get someone to help you, not for everything, but the certain tests like the tension tests. So when you're putting weights into a bag and you're also trying to hold this bag up full of weights, it can, I've got really weak upper body strength, but it can really hurt the hand that you're holding. So that's another thing that I'd recommend. Also, it's really useful if you get other people to video you or take pictures as you're doing it just for your own sort of um, record keeping and also so you can look back and see or could I do that differently um, what I'm not sure about that let's go and have a look back at it again and I keep those on a USB stick so when you've got your guide you will see that um, there's, there's a few differences so I'm UKCA testing my product that's because at the minute I don't plan on selling it out of the UK, including Northern Ireland. So at the minute I'm keeping my product domestic. That's for a few reasons. One, shipping cost. And another is that um, I'm not ready for the cost of that for my business yet. Now, people will say, well, it's only an extra £10. Yes, it is only an extra £10. But once you've spent X amount on your wholesale wall and x amount on this kit and x amount on stuffing and things like that that 10 pound adds up so i will factor it into the future when the shipping costs come down but for me not right now every business is different so you've got your kit you've got all of the bits with it um what's next well in your kit it's really detailed if you have a look at your handbook that's going to be your bible top and bottom of it you're going to need to look through it study it i would recommend reading it once first because typically i didn't i jumped straight in and then i realized oh i haven't got um en 713 certificates for any of the yarns that i was using so i then had to go and research what yarns had those certificates 
some of them do come for free on the yarns website some of them a handmade collective will have but you might have to pay for them and that again can be costly you're talking about 150 quid here per certificate so do your research first what yarn are you using does that yarn have en713 certificates and if not can you substitute that yarn that would be my first thing that i would do um, if you're a crocheter if you're not a crocheter check with your fabrics um, and then go from there so do you need to substitute if you do you have to make the toy that you're going to test with the materials that you're going to use okay so once you've given the pack a good read through you're going to need supplies you're going to need supplies before you get started the main things that you're going to need are a pair of tongs so you might laugh um, but these are going to be really useful when you do the flammability test because I know that I wouldn't want to be holding a toy that's going up in flame with my bare hands. Second thing you're going to need are these G clamps. Now it's specified in the kit what size this piece has to be. It's 19 millimetres, so make sure when you get those G clamps that you get the right size. I got mine off Amazon, I think they were three quid each, so six quid in total. The next thing that I recommend that you get are these S hooks. So S hooks are basically you're going to hang one on one G clamp, your toy is going to be in the middle, and you're going to have another G clamp. And then your bag of weights is going to be on the end. So I recommend the S hoops. I got metal ones. I think they were medium ones off Amazon. They're really strong and durable. They come in a pack of 10. So if you do break any or they get bent or anything like that, then you've got spares. <clears throat> Another thing you're going to need, um, a lighter. So it's got to be a lighter with an adjustable flame on it. And um, the sizes will of the flame have to be the correct size um, so that's all detailed in the pack without giving too much away it's really it's a really fine line between me telling you exactly how to do it so, and then you think you don't have to buy the pack actually you do it's a legal requirement so buy the pack it's all in there i have also got a pop socket um sort of stand for my phone i really like this one because you can angle it around things so it attaches to things and then i put my pop socket on there and that's been useful for if i'm on my own recording things like the flammability test other things that you'll need are weights now you can use anything from around your house so bags of sugar pasta etc as long as you're using the specified weight amount in the pack i've actually got um proper weights but that's only because the other half's got a set of weights so we're just using them and then a really good durable bag um again we're just using a poundland one um a reusable one we just hook it on the end we just pop the weights in there and you'll see all of that so that's the stuff you'll need let's go through a few of the tests okay so let's go through the first test now the first few tests are sort of um the durability of how the toy's been played with. There's um, a couple of tests, but the one I've picked is the dropping height one. So if let's go and have a look at that. Simple drop test onto a hard floor. And then I've just zoomed in just so that you can see that he's okay. So that was the dropping height test. I think you'll agree that for a lot of our plushies that won't have a lot of um, impact on them it'll just be the eyes now you will hear a lot of crunching creaking as long as the eyes don't crack they're okay so the next test that we're going to do is the push tension test let's go and have a look at that one the toys underneath there and we're just pushing a lot of weight through that so as you'll see the push tension test we use a lot of weight with a force going through it and that was to make sure that none of the small parts broke or the toy broke whilst there was a lot of force going through it. 
The next test that I'm going to show you is the torque tension test. So that test will use these and a lot of weights. Again, let's go and have a look at it. Don't be alarmed if you hear lots of creaking as long as your toy measures up to the weight that's going through it and no seams are broken, no stuff is coming out of it, it will be absolutely fine. So let's go and have a look at that one. Okay, so here we've got the S hooks with the bag on and we're just popping weights into the bag. Um, I've got some Gav helping me with this one because it was, it was really, really difficult to hold and put the weights in as well. Um, the clamps are on the two bits of the toy where the seam is so that the weight's going through that seam to check that it's a good seam and it's going to stay in place and it's safe. And then we're just letting the weight stand for about 10 seconds to make sure they hold up against the weight in the bag. So our next test is our rod test. This one is you are poking a wooden rod or a plastic rod or all the descriptions of what rods you can use are in the pack into your toy to see if it can get through any holes is there any um, bits in the seams that have come apart or anything like that after you've done the tension tests so let's go and have a look at that test so as you can see, just poking what is the end of a wooden spoon in any bits of the toy, the seams, any finding if there's any holes um, and documenting that all the way along him. And again, he passed this particular toy, actually passed all of the tests, so he's good to go now. The next test I'm going to show you is the flammability test. Now, this is the test that I've done over on TikTok and YouTube Shorts that has got quite a lot of interest. There is full descriptions on how to do this flammability test and you have to do it on a toy that's been washed and a toy that hasn't been washed. So let's go and have a look at the flammability test. The flammability test, um, which got a lot of traction on TikTok and YouTube Shorts, setting the poor thing on fire and then watching it burn from top to bottom and we're going to show you the soak test now the soak test um, again all the instructions are in there it has to re be repeated a certain amount of times and it has to the toy has to be fully submerged in the water so let's go and have a look at that one making sure that your toy is fully submerged so that's just a few of the tests. There are other tests, but like I said before, there's a fine line between um, me showing you all of the tests and you thinking that you don't have to go out and buy the pack and um, giving you advice. So just a few things. This is a legal requirement if you're selling any toys or anything that can be classed as a toy, anything that's got play value, including key rings um, those tie backs with the long arms they could be classed as a play value uh, jellyfish preemie octopuses anything like that there are a ton of guidance on that website that i showed you at the beginning that's linked in the description to let you know what size cords you can use um, what size the toy has to be how the flammability rate has to be what yarns or what fabrics you can use um so go and check that website out if you're just starting onto your journey go and check it out my top three tips would be just get the pack there's only so much you can read without you've got to do the tests anyway you've got to do them by law to be compliant it's not worth risking your business your house your income over the sake of you know 42 to 52 quid so go and get the pack that's my number one um, point of advice go and get it read through it get your head around it my second tip would be make sure you check that your fabrics or yarns or whatever you're using to make this toy has an en71-3 certificate first and if it doesn't either contact the company and ask them if they've got them or substitute it for something else. So I was using a lot of um, wool craft yarn, a lot of style craft yarn, a lot of mariner yarn, 
which I now have got to put back um, for things like accessories, jumpers, things like that. And I, I am now using Signet Pato yarn because they have all of their certificates freely available online. I've downloaded them. I've put them in all of my technical files. Um, so I substituted that. It also just happened that there was a wool wholesale company that sold the yarn by wholesale, which cut down on my costs a little bit as well. My third tip is don't go it alone. It can be really overwhelming actually starting something like this because not only are you testing the safety of a product, but you're doing it for your business. So don't go it alone. Um, have someone there for support, a friend, a family member, join the Facebook group. There's a, lo a lot of wealth and a lot of support in there for you. So those are my top three tips. Now, follow along because I'm going to do a video for each of the tests. I'm going to do a pitfalls video. I'll do some top tips videos. I'll keep everyone updated of how it's going in shorts as well. Um, and when I've got my first five designs at my first craft market in September, I'll let you guys know and you can sort of see from beginning to end my UKCA testing journey. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe. It helps me out a lot and it's free. And anything you want to know, leave me a comment below.